Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. There is snow on the ground throughout our area, but a little snow doesn't mean we have to ignore our gardens and landscapes. Today we've called on our experts to highlight some of the activities you can do and some of the problems to watch out for both indoors and out. Joining me are Leonard Perry and Ann Hazelrig from UVM. Leonard is well-known horticulture specialist and Ann is a 30-year veteran of the university's plant and diagnostic clinic. It's great to see you both. Good to be back, Judy. Now it was 80 degrees when you were here in October <laughs> and things have obviously changed. Leonard, one of the changes is that it's now bird feeder season and you have some suggestions and want to show us some I of your favorites. I actually feed birds right along through the season, but um, there are some, I know you've covered a lot of bird things on the bird shows mm -hmm. and across the fence, but there are some tips I wanted to share of my own experiences and one is keeping the feeders clean. And this uh, mesh feeder here is for peanuts and I got this for one reason is because the one I have is smaller and a lot of birds like this, the woodpeckers and chickadees, a lot of things. So I got a little bigger one, a medium one. Plus to keep it clean, this is from Aspects, it's really nice. You push these and just pull the bottom off. Oh, that's it huge. It is just so easy and you can clean it, put it back. It's a lot of feeders, you cannot take the bottoms off. It's right. really hard. Which to, makes it they very say, oh, difficult. you can clean and put a brush in. Well, you can't really clean them, so look for one that you can take the bottom off and also keep fresh food, especially with peanuts and corn. Those can get moldy, uh, produce aflatoxins that will really make birds sick or kill them. So if uh, it's wet out, like if it comes up rainy, like it was this fall, um, and you put enough out for a day or two or change it so it doesn't start to get moldy. Mm -hmm. um, Mine go through the smaller ones mm -hmm. a lot, but if it's a big one, just put put out some. So uh, keeping them uh, clean. Now, and I brought a couple of pictures um, of some of the feeders because not all feeders are created equal. <laughs> okay. And I uh, just wanted to show some of my bird's favorites. Uh, of course, the peanut feeder there with a the woodpecker in the center. But on the left is a big mesh feeder, and that has a wide perch for uh, birds like cardinals that need a wider perch, but also the little birds, and they can get on that mesh. That'll hold maybe four quarts of seeds. I use black oil sunflower mm -hmm. so I may not need to fill that for a week and you've noticed the baffle on there as well on the right is a ball feeder a, a bigger one birds love that that was my favorite feeder um, until I got a, another one habitat in the background you see some evergreens helps give them protection during the, the winter time and places to nest so having a, a tree nearby uh, I found really helps or a bush like the uh, lilac on the right there mm -hmm. they, especially chickadees get a seed go sit in there and eat it, and then come back get another one on the left is a tube feeder with the black oil seeds again with wider perches for the bigger birds too now the favorite feeder if I had to get one is the one in the center um, just got it at a hardware store but it's got a wide perch cardinals the red cardinal and the red feeder looks really nice. Bigger birds, a lot of smaller birds. It's a hopper type feeder. Mm -hmm. um, it, only problem is it's not that big. You have to keep it filled. And on the right, the platform I mentioned, on a pipe I put together, raised up off the ground so cats and other things can't get at the birds. So. I noticed you had one baffle on one feeder, but not on your others. I'm, I'm inundated with squirrels, so that's a huge problem. Yeah, well, the, some of those, uh, a couple of them have baffles. The, the post, uh, they can't really get up that galvanized post, but I did notice some. I had some tall plants like sunflowers and some other things. I, I saw them climb up that and then jump over there. So keep <laughs> things out of jumping range. It's a war range. out there. It is. <laughs> now, Ann, do things slow down for you in the plant clinic this time of year? Well, they do, except it, this last week before before all the snow came, we had a lot of calls about invading insects. That's, those are our main calls this time mm -hmm. of year. And Will Michael from across the fence had sent me a picture that uh, we've got up there. Um, this is a really common question right now. It's a uh, box elder bug. And what people notice is all these insects collecting on the southwest sides of their garages or their houses. Mm -hmm. But basically, the insects like the sunny, warm wall. You know, they're just like us. Um, but then as soon as the uh, temperatures get colder, they want to move inside. And they're just looking for a warm spot to be. So I have another picture um, that's a close-up of this. And they're, pretty, they're a pretty bug. They're mm -hmm. a true bug. They've got three red lines on their thorax, the area right behind their 
their head. Um, so they're pretty, but people get upset when they're in the house. And also, uh, these true bugs, if you squish them, they tend to really stink. Ew. So um, <laughs> the best thing you can do is to try to keep them out of the house by caulking, you know, any, around windows. I mean, make, they don't do any damage. They don't eat in the no, wood. No, they don't yeah. eat, do any damage. And the other thing is they don't breed inside your house. So you're not increasing populations. But they do stink if you squish them. And they, you know, people get concerned about them. But caulking, fixing screens, and then once they are inside the house, you know, vacuum them up. Mm -hmm. You know, that's one of the easiest things. Just make sure that if you do vacuum them up, you empty the vacuum cleaner <laughs> <laughs> quick, you know, right then. Because, Otherwise, they'll find a nice place yes. to live. And this is another really pretty uh, insect. It, people call them lady be bugs, but they're truly a beetle. Uh, so this is the Asian multicolored lady beetle, and it can be very colorful, can have zero spots, up to 19 spots. Pretty. Yeah, they are pretty, and they were introduced... Um, to be a biocontrol agent for aphids and scales. Oh, so really? they're kind of good guys, but yeah. again, they like to collect on the southwest sides of homes and garages, make their way inside, and they um, have a defensive chemical that they'll emit so it can stain things. And okay. also they can they have a little bite. Oh really? Yeah, it doesn't oh. <laughs> hurt, but it just surprises you that they can actually bite. So but the best thing to do is if you see them in your house, just vacuum them up. Just vacuum them up. Don't ever, I don't think people should ever use pesticides in, inside a home. Just yeah, not vacuum a good them idea. and then just get, get rid of them. Okay, <laughs> terrific. Well, whether you're a gardener or not, uh, this is the season that people like to buy plants for the holiday. And Leonard, I know you have some examples of what's available this time of year for plants. Master Judy, I can't resist. I got this <laughs> other day, this little uh, mum here. It's great for uh, decorating their low, you know, on the Thanksgiving table, whatever. But um, this will last a while. It's, not, it's a florist mum. It's not a hardy mum, so it won't grow outdoors. But give it cool uh, temperature, especially in the evening. You know, make sure it doesn't stay soaking wet. If anything, keep it a little on the dry side. Just, you know, feel in there, take it out, water it, and put it back. Um, and you'll get several weeks, a month, or six weeks out of this. So, no kidding. And then I brought some pictures of some others that uh, are very common this time of year. Of course, the Thanksgiving cactus is one of the ones, and this is one I got. And actually, it started forming little buds, and now it's in bloom like this, and it's just gorgeous. All these little buds at the end of the leaves. Uh, basically cool at night, below 60, 55, 60. Uh, if you can't do that if it stays warmer where it is, uh, then you may have to give it a night uh, dark treatment at night like you do poinsettias. But just a little cool at night in the fall and um, it should come out in very usual flowers like this. So it can uh, grow from year to year. You can keep this going. Many cut different colors as well on the Thanksgiving cactus. Calancho or Calanchoe, some people say, is one you see a lot this time of year and through the uh, Christmas season. Oranges and yellows too in addition to the reds. Do you need a lot of light this time of year for these plants? Um, not really. Not uh, for that. The Thanksgiving <laughs> cactus, yeah, it does like more, but it was in a north window, got maybe an hour or two of sun uh, in the morning, mm -hmm. and it's done fine. So it, it kind of adapts. And again, this one you won't probably keep, so you just buy it, you enjoy it, so it doesn't really need a whole lot of light because you'll probably be tossing it. But um, it's a pretty one. Of course, poinsettias. Uh, you say, well, it's not Christmas yet. Well, they've come out with this orangey color for fall and put glitter on it. It doesn't come with <laughs> glitter normally. But it's just, wow. for, well, I've got one of these. They haven't bred I, that in yet. Really, I couldn't resist, you know, for Thanksgiving, just get an early start. A little bling on your plants. Exactly, you know, so that's really a nice one. And then, of course, there are all the cut flowers that um, you can see and find, a lot of fall colors and other colors. And uh, like um, a lot of cut flowers, even in the summer, you want to keep these, obviously protect them on the way home. You don't want them to freeze. Mm -hmm. They like cool, but not freezing. Uh, recut the stems when you get them home before you put them in the vase. If use floral preservative. A lot of these now you'll find a little pack that comes with it or you can buy it at a florist. Really helps. And then every three or four days it's good. The water can get mucky. So mm -hmm. just try to, you know, change it, take it out, recut the stems, put fresh water in and hopefully you'll get a week or two weeks out of those or, or more. You know, get them when they're just starting to 
open their good mm -hmm. stage. You'll get a lot of life out of those. And what should people look for in these plants that they're going to be buying? I mean, a good healthy plant will look like what, um, perhaps? You want leaves to the uh, base if it's a potted plant. Um, you obviously don't want disease. You, uh, I like to get them with a lot of the buds still coming and, and mm. just starting to open, so you'll get a lot more life out of those. Mm -hmm. Now, I know there's also one type of plant that you want to highlight. It's a type of shrub. Right. Uh, of course, outdoors, it's a little hard to plant shrubs now, but think about this for uh, next year. Mm -hmm. um, this is a one that I put in years ago, and it's a winterberry. Alex verticillata, and it has red berries on the female plants. It needs a male plant for every few females just so it'll pollinate. But um, some of the birds like this, and more the ones that tend to migrate, cedar wax wings and bluebirds and such, but it's very pretty to decorate. This is uh, mine this time of year, so you can bring it in. And if there are some left from the birds, this, <laughs> this shrub did have a few on it. Um, these get about six to eight feet tall. They actually will kind of like moist soil, but they'll tolerate once they get established, uh, drier soil and drought. So they kind of do a lot. Um, they tend to like more sun. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you have a sunnier place, you'll get more flowers on it. Um, but it's just a great uh, hardy shrub, a native plant too. Oh, that's which is really important. We've talked about the difference exactly, of native yeah, and native. Exactly. So if you want a native, attractive shrub, especially with the berries in the fall, it looks just pretty. Even if you don't use them, um, if the birds leave them for you, it's a winter berry. Mm -hmm. Aren't there? specific cultivars that are better than others? There are some different cultivars, like most shrubs, there are a lot of different cultivars, mm -hmm. some, um, and you can find those, usually you, you, you often do find those instead of just the species, mm -hmm. And um, but again, the, one of the things you want to watch for is to get a cultivar, a female one that will pollinate, because uh, they may bloom at different times, uh, but, yeah. but some of them do, that's a good <laughs> point, have more berries, some of these cultivars, right. they may be shorter, and they're even more orangey, I think there's even one that may have more of a yellow mm -hmm. uh, fruit on it so they're not all red. Yeah. So this is really a good time to, to look ahead too for the next season and think okay what am I going to do for my gardens next year exactly. and, and plan and make some make some um, and, lists. You know, we started with the birds and like in with the birds here with the shrub because again it feeds some but think about some of the shrubs you can do some research and books and online this winter find out those shrubs that will not only provide food for birds but habitat. And I know uh, when I've been pruning these I've seen some bird nests in there it provides some cover you know when the leaves come out so they can hmm. have some cover in the uh, in the summertime get away from predators or you know hot days that kind of thing but you know places for birds to nest and like I mentioned before in this slide, the evergreen plants are mm -hmm. just awesome for birds because it really gives them that protection from those winds. You were in the <laughs> nice warm house, but you know, the wind's howling out there. I'm thinking, I'm so glad to have some of these evergreens, the balsam firs and some other different types of variegated cedars and things like that, that they can actually hide and hunker down. And even during the summer, I find even the hummingbirds love to go in and out of those. I think they build mm. nests in there and, yep, nice and go cool. to the feeder. So it, it's a nice place mm. for them to give them protection, get away from. And so uh, think about that when planning it's a good thing to do this winter, be thinking about what you can add to the landscape next year, mm -hmm. not and only for you, but for the birds. Right, Ooh. and also, too, I think it's important to, to talk with your folks at nurseries and, and even yeah. and for, with you, too. Ask questions. Exactly. Right. And there are a lot of these, you know, go to a garden uh, center uh, that has some trained professionals and mm -hmm. really knows these plants and, you know, be getting some ideas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that's what they do. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, right. They know all those cultivars. <laughs> now, Anne, um, a few more insects. I know you had some uh, photos you wanted to show us. Yeah, so there are a couple more insects. Uh, the next one I have um, is the western conifer seed bug. These also can congregate, but these are larger. They're about three quarters of an inch long. So they, they can't always, miss them. Yeah, they can't <laughs> miss them, and they always look menacing, but they are, they're no problem. I just pick them up and throw them outside. But... Um, yeah, they're big, and I guess when they fly, they can sort of buzz. Oh, all so right. So that's a little concerning. But the same thing goes for those, you know, just vacuum them up. Mm -hmm. This is another true bug called the brown marmorated stink bug, and it's a little bit shorter than that western. It's not so long and thin. It mm -hmm. has that shield yep. shape uh, back, and the marmorations are the... Um, if we can go back to the marmorations, they mm -hmm. have... Uh, they're like a little checkerboard around the abdomen. Mm -hmm. So that's... Uh, 
what marmorated. I never knew what marmorated meant, so I had Check to look that up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but this is actually a, an agricultural pest. Mm -hmm. But in Vermont, so far, the numbers have been really low, so we're not seeing it as an ag pest, but just as a home invader. Okay. Leonard, I know you want to have more information on your website, and you want to give folks that information. Yeah, it's uh, Perry's Perennial Pages. I've got um, a lot more and articles on things like the birds and these holiday plants and many other hundreds of topics on there, as well as information on uh, tours upcoming. We'll be having a uh, couple this next year, going back to Montreal uh, next fall, but also in July, I'll we'll be going down to Connecticut with Charlie Nardozzi. So uh, watch that this fall, and I'll we'll be putting up details when they're available on that. And, and if, you, if people have questions about the um, Yeah, plans. Master Gardener Helpline, we're uh, probably closing for the holidays, mm -hmm. uh, so less uh, you know, hours available, mm -hmm. but you can always leave a message. We'll get the message, and we'll get back in touch. Terrific. I want to thank you both for joining thank us you. today. Thank you. That's our program for today. I'm Judy Simpson. I'll see you again next time on Across the Fence. Uh -huh.